we start on Thanksgiving Thursday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Green Bay Packers, 4-6, 1-4 and, six, one and four on the road at the Detroit Lions, 8-2, and 4-1 and one at home. We're at Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. Let's get right after the line history here for this one. Sitting here with the Lions at minus 7.5 and, and, and minus 103. Uh, they opened up at minus 7.5, minus 106. So just three cents of movement over to the Green Bay Packers from a total perspective here. We have a 46 and a half. That's heavily juiced to the over. The other books are showing a 47. This is legitimately a 47. It was a 46 and a half for the pick them today. This opened up at 45 and a half. So we've gone up a point and a half here. From a cash flow perspective, 60% of the tickets and 74% of the cash on the Detroit Lions. Lions not moving towards them. From a total look, 57% of the tickets and 61% of cash are on this over. Packers coming off the big 23-20 win at Lambeau over the Chargers. Jordan Love had his best game of the season. He was impressive. 27-40 uh, for 322 yards and two touchdowns. He did fumble twice. You know, he's got fumbleitis issues. He lost one of them. First Packer to throw for more than 300 yards since Aaron Rodgers on December 12th, 2021. And it was a big rally late. You know, it was impressive. And that they've been so bad at that this year, you know, coming back late. Four of their six losses have been decided by a total of 11 points. Don Tabian Wicks led receivers with three catches for 91 yards. And he suffered a concussion during the game. He's in protocol. He is not going to be able to get out of protocol by Thursday. Uh, Thursday morning, too. So he, he Dontavian Wicks will not be playing here. Uh, now, that's not being confirmed, but that can be our guess. Uh, they were able to withstand injuries to running backs Aaron Jones and rookie Emmanuel Wilson, who was carted off the field. And uh, A.J. Dillon was the last running back on the roster, and he struggled. 14 carries for 29 yards. Jaden Reed did run three times for 46 yards to try and help. Also caught four passes for 46 yards. So they've signed James Robinson to the practice squad. Uh, you remember the undrafted free agent who... Rushed for 1,070 yards as a rookie. And, you know, all rookie honors. He was very, very good. Tore his Achilles in 2021. He's not been the same player since. So uh, we expect that he will be in the lineup. But that's tough for a Packers team who will likely be unable to run the ball and won't have Dontavian Wicks, who was their leading receiver last week. They were 7-14 of 14 on third down. They've been good at that all year. Uh, they're eighth in the league, converting 43.5% of opportunities. Their offense, though, uh, Sputters in the red zone, one of two on Sunday. They're 27th in the league, scoring touchdowns just 47.1% of the time. And that's, can you can put the blame partly on Aaron Jones just not being the superstar that we remember him to be. The defense had two sacks, five quarterback hits. They allowed the Chargers to go 7 of 14 on third down. They're tied for 17th in the league in third down defense. They did hold the Chargers to one of four in the red zone. And the Chargers entered the game a second in the NFL in red zone offense. So that was impressive. You know, the held the Chargers to just six points on their first three trips inside the 10 yard line. And they've been very good in that area all season long. They're seventh in the league, allowing touchdowns on just 45.5% of uh, opponents' red zone drives. And Darnell Savage will be back, designated to return. We expect him to be back in the lineup. That will help them very, very much. Lions coming off a wild, come from behind 31 26 victory at home over the Bears, down 26 14 with 4 15 remaining. And they came back. You know, Goff, when it counted most, stepped up. Uh, they have their best record through 10 games since 1962. Goff, 23 of 35 for 236 yards, two touchdowns, three picks. Amon St. Brown caught eight for 77 touchdown. And this Montgomery-Jameer Gibbs combo is very good. Montgomery ran 12 for 76 and a touchdown. Gibbs ran eight for 36. He also caught six passes for 59 yards. He looks so dangerous out of the backfield. The offense was excellent when it mattered most. Eight for 11 on third down. So now they're 11. The third down was an issue for them earlier in the year. Now they're 11th in the league, 42.3% conversion rate on third down. Three of three in the red zone. They've not been good in the red zone this year. They're 17th now in the league, 52.9% of the time they're scoring touchdowns. They struggled to get pressure on fields. You know, two sacks, four quarterback hits. They couldn't get off the field. The Bears had 11 rushing first downs on them, and the Packers are just not going to be able to do that. The Bears, held, the Bears held on to the ball for 40 minutes and 24 seconds, and despite not getting off the field, they were decent on third down defense. They held the Bears to 5 of 14 on third down. They're seventh in the league, allowing opponents to convert just 35.3% of those chances. Held the Bears to 1 of 2 in the red zone. That's been a huge problem spot all year. 30th in red zone defense. They allowed opponents to score touchdowns 67.7% of the time. And Anzalone was all over the field, as he often is, 15 tackles. Aiden Hutchinson is the first NFL player with 15 sacks and four picks in his first two seasons. And Jonah Jackson inactive again after he played for the first time in a month. So that hurts their offensive line. So issues with Green Bay, but momentum for them. 
what's your plan for our first game on our big Thanksgiving Thursday card, Packers, Lions? Troy, take it away. So the first thing I want to mention in a game like this, and this, this applies to really all three of the first games, just some notes for you guys to keep in mind. It's the first time in Thanksgiving history where all to every team playing has been a favorite of seven, a touchdown or more. And big favorites, ATS, have been a juggernaut at home. So that's just something to keep in mind because that applies to every single one this week because they're all over seven. But I think the Lions got absolutely blessed with to be able to escape with the win. But that's what good teams do at the end of the day. That's what good teams, what good coaches do. Goff, the lowest grades of his season. And really, if you look down the board, this Lions team, I mean, they graded out like they did a lot versus the Baltimore Ravens, which just I think the biggest credit I want to give to there is the Bears secondary. Because I think up until, you know, late in the fourth quarter, that secondary, that unit played great. The offensive line also fit that category. Worst game of their season. And like I've been talking about with this Lions team since back when we faded them, uh, this defense is due for regression. We called it weeks ago, bad tackling, they're rough in coverage, and they're bad in the red zone. And the Lions, I think they got away from what makes them them. Uh, they need to predicate their offense on their run game. They know, they, we know, we all know what Jared Goff does with play action. So if you're running the ball effectively, you're running play action with the most efficient quarterback running that play. Uh, they should have a lot of success. I think 20 carries between Monty and Gibbs is just not enough. Uh, they got away from their identity, and I think they got punished or almost got punished, escaped. Uh, and But here's the thing is the Lions struggle with mobile quarterbacks. Go back and look at the third down efficiencies, fourth down efficiencies, and just overall EPA versus teams like the Ravens or like Justin Fields with the Bears. The, it's a huge it's a huge difference between their ability to defend. Um, so that's something to definitely to keep in mind. And the Packers, again, they're on the uptrend, right? They put together the best game of their season. This is three three weeks in a row where this offense, I think, has continuously looked better. Uh, great pass blocking up front, but they struggle to run the ball. And um, they stay behind the sticks all the time. They, their average down a distance from the first down is one of the longest in the NFL. Ultimately, I think this Packers team is better than perceived by the public. They're more of a league average team, but I still think they're a little bit undervalued. But ultimately, this just feels like another spot where, at worst, the Lions win but don't cover. The Lions should be able to run the ball effectively. Packers grades, your run defense grades are terrible for teams that run the ball that with run heavy offenses like the Lions. And it's a perfect spot. Last week, Chargers at home for Jordan Love and the, the, the Packer offense to get right. Now they're going to be on the road in a hostile environment versus a Lions team that nearly escaped, right? They already got spooked. Now in the NBA, I don't like when teams are teetering on a loss, but when you got a good team in the NFL that was teetering on a loss, they usually come in and hammer at home, especially as big favorites. And the numbers bear that to be true. Home favorites in divisional games have been a profitable venture. You know, home favorites between seven and nine in division games, 27 and five ATS or 27 and five on a teaser leg, 85%. You know, I'm very interested in teasers. I think there's an edge to be had in teasers and it won't be there for much longer. And if the total, if the total is in this range between 44 and 48 and a half, eight and four ATS, 11 and one on a teaser, I'm on a Lions teaser. I got it down to one and a half. And I paired that with two different spots with the Browns and with the 49ers. So you're using Lions in a teaser minus one and a half on two tickets. And that's about as square as it gets, putting the Lions on a teaser in this spot, in my opinion. But at the same time, you know, going through the database and being able to have that tool and check with it and to see that, hey, don't be so scared of where all the public action is or where the public sentiment is. Sometimes it just cashes, especially on Thanksgiving. You know, I I just the more I sit with this, the more I feel like the Lions are gonna cover this seven and a half. I yeah, I just I don't understand. I think this is probably the best sell high spot all year we'll have on the Packers. Yeah, will we ever get one again? Uh, yeah. I doubt it. I doubt it. And they're hanging, they're giving the hook, right? I think it's important that we're seeing a, a seven and a half and it really hasn't budged. I know the public sentiments on them, on the Lions, that is. But we've seen this with these games before, like with the Raiders, um, with a few other games where it fit a very similar profile and they got the job done. Yeah. And then, I mean, I, I do not understand the move to the over. It, it does not make sense to me. Uh, I agree with Dennis Garcia's feelings that, it's just too high for a Packers football game. And when you deal with a team that will have a difficult time scoring, which I think the Packers will, you know, then 
you know, the Lions aren't going to have to do too much. They're not going to have to take big risks. They they can use Gibbs and Montgomery and, you know, force the ball here. I, you know, the team total at 18, I guess it's 18 and a half. It's minus 128 to the over right now for the Packers. But uh, I, I just, hmm. wow. Uh, Brady says, what was the number on the first uh, Lions Packers game? I don't have that here, but. My goodness, does this just feel like a very, very difficult spot for the Packers and a perfect spot here for the Lions? Like you said, getting scared, a little bit of a wake-up call against the Packers team that's going to be dealing with injuries. And and, and as I said, this is maybe our lone spot all year to sell the Packers high. Well, I did not think when Packers were at the house in week four, Packers were two-and-a-half-point dogs. The line moved towards the Lions. And it was not a very public play, the Lions. It was a very 50-50 split across the board on the spread and on the money line. I think the Lions take care of business here. I think this is how I start my Thursday card. Okay, this was not a part of the plan coming in, but it's become this. Uh, I, I think the Lions take care of business here at home, and I plan to be on them. Um, uh, uh, can you write that again, Birdie, SP, not Sire? Um, to try writing that again so we can understand what you're saying. Uh, so, Sky Dragon looking at oh, the, the lines from the first game, okay. All right, uh, let's move on. Hey, one here. thing to point out on the over, yeah. you say Dennis Garcia is on the over, or he was looking towards the no, control? he does not get the over, he likes the under. Well, the well, my one concern is here, you know, in this range between the 44 and the 48. Uh, the market move to the over is way more efficient than it is to the under. It's hard to find any under trend in the NFL the past two seasons. That's what my data- database is predicated on. But still, it, it still looks like it goes over more often than not, or much higher than all the unders go relative to the average. I, I Brady says, not sure you're selling high here. I believe this is the highest that we've had the opportunity to sell the Packers since maybe the first Week couple one. weeks of the year. Week uh, one. Maybe the first two weeks of the year because Love had that great start. I think this is a very high spot. They just beat the Chargers. The Chargers are only three and a half point dogs to the mighty Baltimore Ravens at home. But you know, we don't have to agree on things. This is all just uh, us working and sharing information and angles. Uh, I'm going to be on the Lions. I'm going to be on the Lions, and I will be looking to get a live under, especially if the Lions get up. Because I don't think the Packers are capable of playing from behind here, and I don't know how they're going to run the ball. And if if you can put, you know, set yourself up to defend the pass against Jordan Love when they're not able to run the ball, it should be easy. That's what I'm seeing. But I'm ready to roll. That'll be my first spot on the board here.